All right, good evening everybody. I'd like to call to order the Farmington Board of Education meeting for Monday, September 17th, 2018. If we can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda, item five, 5A. Uh, well, consideration of the superintendent's report, the 2018-2019 school opening. It's a bit of old news. We've been in school <laughs> a couple of weeks, but um, we just welcomed back approximately 4,000 students on August 27th. Uh, Kim and I attended first day of school events. We visited classrooms, uh, police chief Melanson, our, our SROs and many Farmington police officers also attended the first day of school. That's a tradition in Farmington. Um, we did face challenges as the students in the audience and if there are any teachers or faculty with the heat wave during the first and second <laughs> weeks of school. And we had uh, three early release days because of the heat. Uh, and we really do thank our students, faculty, staff, and families for their patience and understanding during the extreme heat. Uh, there's information uh, just about our attendance on the very first day, 3,986 students, um, and just some information about first day opening activities. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Any questions uh, for Kathy? Okay, thank you. Uh, next item, 5B, Summer School Programs Report. So we had another really exciting summer for summer school enrichment and programming. Kim always does an introduction and invites <laughs> uh, individuals up to the table, but uh, just another stellar summer for us. In yes, Birmingham. absolutely. Um, we had some new challenges this year in shifting some of our programs to a different location. Um, but across the board, I would say through strong leadership from Karen and others in the district, we had an amazing summer, happy children, lots of learning, and really well-managed programs. So I'm going to have Karen Marino come up and speak about them. Hi. 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 So we were quite busy again this summer. Um, as she mentioned, we were at two separate schools for our programming. Um, we were at Irving A. Robbins Middle School for the Excel Camp for the Summer Exploration Academy, which is the elementary age summer uh, program, and the ESY Extended School Year program, as well as um, the Chinese Language School, which was there for a week. And the preschool program, too, I'm sorry, preschool and kindergarten readiness program was there. And then at Westwoods, we had um, some enrichment programs, as well as the performing arts programs. So strings, chamber academy, musical theater, and band. Um, there was a new, there was a little bit of change of leadership to the programs this summer as well. Um, Carl Shugart was, uh, has stepped aside as far as being the director for the Strings Academy because he was interested in piloting a new program this year actually. So we piloted the Chamber Academy which focused more on the older um, students who um, wanted more individualized instruction um, and um, opportunity to sort of um, perfect their craft, I guess. And um, so David Kramer um, took the role as the director of the Strings program. He had been assistant director for a number of years, so he took the reins following um, Carl's um, moving over to the Chamber Academy, but Carl was still very much involved. Um, and that went well. Uh, it's going to probably be a program where we'll see a, a bit of growth over the next few years, and um, especially with Carl at the helm. Numbers for the programs were pretty much on par with how they had mostly been. Um, Excel Camp 
experienced um, an increase in numbers. Some of the performing arts camps increased, a, um, I'm sorry, experienced a decrease in numbers, but some of the times were changed. Band Academy shifted from the afternoon to the morning, and it started right after school um, concluded for the year. Actually, it was supposed to start uh, one of the days where school was still in session, and then it got bumped because of the snow days. So um, there's a little bit to be worked out there. But overall, um, we had a lot of kids um, in our programs and a lot of fun. Um, and we're in the process of meeting with all the program managers now to, you know, get their feedback as far as how they think the summer went and just kind of improve for the next year. Um, we will uh, be merging again for next year uh, due to some of the construction that's due to take place at IAR. Not sure if uh, uh, the schedule to be worked out yet, but we have to uh, merge back at Westwoods. But the plan for the future is to because there's so much expansion is to see if we could um, operate in two schools in town, um, but that's to be decided. Um, so it's a lot of just trying to put the puzzle pieces together again for next summer to make it all work for everybody and um, make it a great summer for everyone and so everyone can have an equal opportunity to have fun, I suppose, and uh, again, make it just work so we're all, all happy. <laughs> Well, I'd, I'd, I'd just like to thank you for, once again, it sounds like a broken record, but the sort of the, the wealth and sp across the spectrum of offerings is just, it's, it's amazing to see what, what the program achieves in terms yeah. of the offerings. I, I have to give a lot of credit, because um, I went on a maternity leave actually in March of last year, so right as everything was really ramping up, I went and had a baby. Um, <laughs> so Congratulations. Amy, yes. Amy, <laughs> um, Amy Ferrari did a phenomenal job in Lori Weirbeck of putting together the tail end of the summer. Amy was at Westwoods um, overseeing a lot of the performing arts um, programs and kind of rolled with the changes of everything there. You know, we had to hire additional nurses and additional security guards and Amy took a lot of that on um, towards the end of the year um, last year. So I really appreciate her, her, her time and her effort as well as Lori. So, um, you know, she couldn't be here tonight, but I did want to uh, make that known that she was an integral part of putting the summer together, um, you know, while I was home relaxing. Much. <laughs> um, so, but I, I returned the first day of summer, and I mean, everything uh, pretty much ran like clockwork. I mean, the few minor hiccups here and there, but um, all the program managers were, you know, on task as usual, just, um, you know, really are masters of their craft and just know what to do and it all ran like clockwork even with you know the new programs and the new schools and all that and the changes um, it worked you know we want to make it continue to work whether we change buildings or go here or go there we make it work so yeah. any questions or comments okay. Liz um, so first of all I, I think that your idea of relaxing is different than mine. <laughs> 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 not sure you know what that word <laughs> <laughs> But um, the other thing is, I just want to know if there was any feedback or how people d dealt with the two schools. Like, at what? So how I did think it go? for for some people, it was a little bit of an, oh my gosh, we're going to be at a different school. I actually just met with um, two of the program managers this afternoon, um, Sue Wolfel and Megan Lamar, regarding how their teachers felt about being at IAR because that was really like the big change. Excel Camp, we're kind of flexible; we kind of go anywhere. And um, you know, Amanda Gorski's great at making it work, and Brian's great at making it work. So we're kind of just a make it work crowd. But. Um, you know, it, was a, it took some extra planning for um, the teachers to kind of get ready since it is a building designed for older students. Um, and we had some younger students there. But they actually really liked it. <coughs> they liked, you know, they made the classrooms work. We had to bring some additional materials. But they liked the campusy feel of IAR. Um, they were able to go to East Farms and utilize the playground and the fields and the pond area there. They had the, the bigger fields at IAR. They had the bigger blacktop. There was just kind of more room to spread out. Um, there was more parking. It just worked out as far as like there was space and everybody didn't feel like they were on top of each other. Um, as far as Westwoods goes, um, Amy could probably speak a little bit more on feedback there, but I, I think the school appreciated not having so many people there at one time and 
you know, for next year, like I said, we have to figure out a way to kind of make it work for everybody. Um, but overall, um, I think it was once we figured it out and saw that it could work, um, and even um, Abby Rohr with Special Services who supervised the program this summer, um, and she was kind of, um, you know, she, she was without, I mean, Ted took over and but then Scott left and there was a whole transition there that she was dealing with and she handled it beautifully, just trying to, you know, make it, make it work. And um, she actually liked having the IAR space as well. So, you know, I haven't had too much parent feedback personally, but through the program managers, um, the parent, you know, other than the minor things here and there, overall, the parents were not dissatisfied with the change in location and the Excel camp had to stay with where um, the uh, academic programs were because we have a lot of students who overlap so they go to both programs. Performing arts not as much. We did try to offer um, some alternate programs at Westwood so um, the Strings program had a full day option and their band program had an option in the afternoon. It was actually a new program this year with um, an art teacher and a PE teacher in town that they did a motion balance and creativity academy which kind of drew everything together. Um, so there was opportunity for full day extension. We tried to make that mm. as best we could. But overall, um, I, don't, I haven't heard anybody uh, vocalize that they were really upset about it. We, we tried to make the best decisions that made the most sense, I guess, so. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, not to put you on the spot, but if and you're soliciting the feedback and you're gonna you know, think about it, but what, if you look prospectively to next year, any areas you wanna continue to develop or next go year, in a new direction with some things? Next year's gonna be tricky because we have to kind of reconfigure everything because we're back at Westwoods, but mm -hmm. we are gonna try to reconfigure it that all the programs are not running. We're gonna try to do two tracks. Um, with the academic elementary programs going first and then they're out and then the performing arts per per programs coming in so they're not there at the same time to help the custodial staff and help the office staff there and just not have so many people there at the same time because at some point it also does become a little bit of a safety issue there's all these kids coming and going you have buses and you have cars and you have parents and you have and parking and it just you want to make sure that everything everything works and everything fits and it, it's it's a comfortable fit for everybody over the summer and we're not overdoing it so um, you know we, we definitely look into all the options and we look into the high school and we look into um, uh, the elementary schools and just try to determine what is the best, the best space so the preschool probably will be back at Noah Wallace in their space um, high school programs are probably take place here and, and as far as Everything else, I think we are going to divide into those two tracks, and and then in the future going forward, once IAR is back at the table, mm -hmm. re-explore bringing more programs there, and just do what makes the most sense, I, I suppose. Okay. So. okay. Anything else? Or we spend the year like trying to evaluate it and figure it yeah. out, meet about. It. <laughs> <laughs> so we're already talking about this summer now. Yeah. Well, that's why I asked the question yeah. because you know, it's going to be here before already, you know it. So. Yeah. We already. Yeah. The gears are already turning. So yeah. we started talking about next summer, like this summer. So. <laughs> it's a process. Well, thank you for all yeah, you thank do. You. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's, you, you guys do fantastic work. And it's it, the program is an amazing offering to our families in yeah. the district. Mm -hmm. It really, really is the, mm -hmm. as I said, the breadth of offerings is fascinating. Um, so and thank you. Congratulations thank you. <laughs> for coming back. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Good work. Okay, next item on the agenda, 5C, Engage Learning Update. So we have lots of updates that really relate to our first agenda item, which was the opening day of school. So at East Farms, uh, Physical Education highlighted a cooperative games unit focused on communication, collaboration, teamwork, and problem solving. East Farms also is focusing on self-direction and resourcefulness through inquiry and specials areas. Noah Wallace uh, had a flag ceremony on the first day with a focus on academic mindsets. Uh, classroom norms have been created across all classrooms at Noah Wallace to create an environment of belonging for our students. IAR initiated a new tradition for the first day of school with music, amazing music, uh, student speakers, and inspiring words from Mr. Hurwitz and Ms. Arizari. They also raised for the first time uh, class flags, a class of 
2023 and the class of 2024. It's like takes your breath away when you think about it. Right? <laughs> um, uh, flags, which Shows. also, uh, it's a new tradition uh, for the school. Uh, union also is working on academic mindsets. So you're gonna hear a lot about academic mindsets this year. And basically um, statements like, I belong to this academic community. I can succeed at this. My ability and competence grow with my effort. This work has value to me. So uh, we're working uh, with students on those academic mindsets. Um, and it really is a part of the school's <coughs> development priorities at Union. If you go and uh, go to the stairs area, there are new number patterns placed on the stairs to help students to learn to skip count. And their times <laughs> tables at West District. They had a, a great first day. I was there with uh, Chief Melanson. They had a ceremony uh, with a focus on relationships matter, um, and that all are welcome at West District. And at Westwoods, they had an opening assembly uh, that focused on dig deep, uh, the dig deep challenge, and students showcased accomplishments, celebrated collaborative learning process by creating shovels in a collaborative group. And the shovels are displayed as a symbol of each homeroom's shared goals and commitment to digging deeper in 2018-19. So lots of great engaged learning updates mm -hmm. for the board. And, and how's Scott doing over it? Wonderful. Right. It, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> great start. Great. All right. Okay, any questions uh, for Kathy? Okay. Next item, 5D, appointments, resignations. The, uh, one resignation. Yep. That's That's it. It. Yep. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda, six, uh, budget impact, budget update. The only thing I'll mention to the board right now in the business office, we're starting to prepare for um, the upcoming audit. Um, the um, auditors are scheduled to come in um, the second week in October. Um, so we're doing a lot of, um, as, we, as I mentioned at the last board meeting, we've done our state reporting for the year. So now we're compiling our audit book in preparation for them to be um, um, uh, coming in. Any questions for Vince? Okay. Mark, no? Oh, okay. No, sorry. Uh, new business. We have no new business. I guess we're off to a good start. So that's <laughs> right. Uh, item 8, report to the board chair. I have nothing to report uh, at this point in time. Um, go to item 9, consideration committee reports, personnel negotiations. Mark. Uh, we are, we just met on the 6th, and unfortunately we are taking a little bit of a longer break before our next meeting. Um, we will be meeting on October the 22nd. So it's been a little bit of a slower process than usual, but yeah, uh, we are, we're getting through. <laughs> uh, hopefully we'll see a lot of good things at the next meeting and uh, be able to share more at that point. Okay. So. Great. Okay, policy, Christine. We just met before this meeting, so we should have uh, the legislative updates um, on one of the future agendas. Okay. Uh, 9C curriculum, Michelle, no report. Uh, 9D communications, Ellen. Uh, no report. Okay. Okay, next on the agenda, 10, report to community liaisons, correct. Uh, no report from uh, on that right now. Uh, 10B, Farmington High School, community survey ad hoc committee. Um, we met. Uh, the, the last week. Um, at this point in time, the uh, consultant we retained came in and met with us in sort of a brainstorming, open uh, discussion format to sort of help frame the issue as to give feedback what we thought um, <coughs> collectively as a, as a group uh, would help in addressing uh, and, and drafting uh, survey questions. So we'll wait for that to come back. Uh, on the data uh, from from the consultant, and we'll start uh, moving forward with the with the uh, questionnaire and the survey. I mean, we're going to be on a pretty tight time frame. Um, that I finalized yet, but you know, from soup to nuts. Once we get hit the, the you know the road with that, and it's going to be eight, seven, eight weeks, so it's going to go pretty quickly. So uh, hopefully, we'll have a little better you know clarity or uh, around you know the survey details um, in about a week and a half time, and then we'll take it from there. But it's moving forward, and I think it was a very productive session we you know probably it's came excellent. in with different views and yeah. all kind of moved in the a good direction so it was, it was, it was very positive yeah it was excellent yeah it really was yeah so um kudos any to questions bill on Silva. that or kudos to bill Silva. Yeah. i just want to state yeah. you know for the record bill Silva really did a fantastic job of helping focus our work i really he changed my mind about a lot of the thoughts i had and that was it was really appreciated yeah you know, please i definitely want to make that no, clear no. well in, in a very simple way he right. built a, 
admonish us, I guess, maybe not be too, be too strong word, but said, be forward looking, not backward, backward looking. Right. Right. You know, don't dwell on the past. Yeah, yeah. don't dwell on the past and, yeah. you know, go forward. So, and but it, but it did great. away without, yeah, but exactly. acknowledging the concerns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of people that they were, in other words, he, he, he validated those concerns, yeah. but try to refocus that mm -hmm. so that it's it's constructive going forward. Mm -hmm. And I really was very, it was very simple and very yeah. very well done. Yeah. Our next meeting is the twenty seventh, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Chris? So, any questions on that? Yes, Andrea. Do, do you know how many people are going to be surveyed? Um, the number is 400, 400. Um, but there could be some flexibility on that, mm -hmm. depending on if they, you know, they hit too much of a target group, certain demographic groups, or they may, but, but 400. It, it, and it's fascinating because when you're dealing with these professional consultants, increasing the survey group does not change the analysis at all. It might move it a point or two, but right. if you did 1,000, 3,000, or 5,000, you're not going to move it much. I mean, that 400 is going to be a reliable number. Uh, of survey for the right for the kind of precision yeah. that you would get at those additional yeah. it wouldn't make sense it cuts economically the yeah. yeah yeah the data is going to yeah. come th they're going to select their pool from the census data that we have for the town so that's how they're going to create that's where they're going to start with their mm. list yeah and if they, they find it's, it. if they find it skewed maybe one way or the other it, we right. can supplement it mm -hmm. but it's 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 a it's a pretty tight number which is which is fascinating that and that allows it to move a little quicker you know you, you can get a quicker feedback but if the data is coming back one way or the other then, then a certain group is not being represented that you know we can change that but it's 400 okay. yeah yeah it's going to be uh phone surveys not online either, yeah. right which is yeah. also really interesting to learn about that process yeah so anything else Okay, uh, next item, 10C, uh, the high school facility and financial ad hoc. Christine? So we are meeting tomorrow, uh, 7 o'clock here in the library, and the next meeting after that is scheduled for October 16th, uh, also at 7 right now here in the library. Okay. Nothing to update from the last meeting. Okay. Okay, uh, next item, 10D, focus, Bill. Um, I'm waiting to hear from, we met in June at a great meeting, and then my understanding is they were going to circle back to me at some point in August. I have not heard from Fred, I'm sorry, Ed or uh, Nancy, so maybe you staff can reach out to them to find out when they're meeting again. That would be great, because we had really good conversations, and I'm looking forward to a, a really good year mm -hmm. with them this year. Okay. Uh, 10E, Public School Foundation, Christine. So we met, I think it was last week. Um, they have a really nice group of people. They've done their, I don't know if anybody saw on Facebook, they did their awarding uh, of their grants this year. Um, save the date, 11-9, November 9th is their Trivia Bee. They're looking to get uh, a ton of participation. That's their biggest fundraiser. So save the date on that. We um, used to have a Board of Ed team, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Kathy was on the winning team last year. I was a Veronica. Right. I remember there yes. being one. Challenging all of It's not a Board of Ed team, though. <laughs> <laughs> can we make one? Yeah, we can make one. All right. Yes, all right. That would be fun. That would be fun. Yep. Um, next meeting is October 16th. 16th, okay. Mm -hmm. I understand. I talked to Elizabeth Norwood over the weekend. I guess there's a lot of people showing up to help, too, it sounds like. They have a great team they there do. now. They're so engaged. That's they awesome. are really excited was, to not just so participate, but move that organization great. forward yeah. to That's the future. And mm -hmm. they're very engaged. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a great. fun meeting. Thank you, Christine. Uh, Superintendent Center's Scholastic Athletics Advisory Committee. Christine? Oh, well, we had our meeting, you know, in this last spring but i don't i don't think the next one is going to be scheduled until after the fall sports right. season right okay, yeah. yes so that's twice a year yeah so. mm -hmm. okay uh 10g chamber of commerce michelle no report 10h green efforts committee andrea um we met last week i think on the 10th and um right now the focus is on um identifying goals through 2020 mm -hmm. Um, and I think they've streamed, well, we've streamlined it to focus on waste reduction in the town. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 10 I ad hoc cafeteria, Liz. I don't have any report, but I, do you know when the next meeting is? Is there one scheduled? I believe so. <laughs> I believe it's in October. Okay. At the second meeting in October, before that meeting, I believe. All right. I just couldn't find it on my calendar before. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's coming. It's I know it's here. It's on my calendar. I just couldn't find it. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Liz. Uh, 10J, Health and Wellness, Ellen. No report. Okay. Chris, can I make a point of order? Absolutely. Um, we started our meeting on time, I know, but I know there's some folks in the public uh, in the audience came in a little bit after we started, and I'm wondering, because there isn't any more 
public comment on our agenda, um, perhaps we could allow or make a modification to allow some folks to speak, or is that not is that not appropriate? Agenda to. It's a regular meeting. So we can't. No, I I think it has to be like a super majority, right? I think that's right. Yeah, I think. It has I to think be that's super right. Majority. Okay. I'm just, I'd make that motion if I could to, okay, you can make, yeah. to allow for a second opportunity for public comment because as it stands right now, we're going into executive session mm -hmm. and then we're done for the night. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want people coming down here tonight not having an opportunity to speak if they were indeed planning on speaking. So I'll make yep. that motion. Okay. Do you have a second? I second. Okay. Any discussion? Liz? So I'm, I think public comment is great. I think everybody should come make public comment. I used to make frequent public comment, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> um, I just think that we have rules, and we started on time. So I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm going to wait to hear how other people feel about it. But I think that there are rules. And I think that we have specifically modified our policy on public comment in the past, um, recent past, to be more um, rule orientated I guess so um, I'm just I'm curious to see how other people feel about it I'm not inclined to bend the rules because then you just wind up bending them all the time that's fair I just mm -hmm. want to yep. have a conversation that's about it Ellen no that's okay. fine that's right. why I want to hear other totally people fair. you know I like you. I just don't want to get in a rut of bending them all the time I, I respect that and I and, and and if my motion fails I'll be okay <laughs> I'll understand that but I, but I just want to at least have the conversation because mm -hmm. I know I know for a fact there's a few people that are going to want to try to speak I think I, I understand mm -hmm. Ellen yes um, I just and I'm going to add perspective because I sense um, some uh, maybe reservation for doing this and I just want to say I respect your opinion because we do make rules mm -hmm. I will say I've spent the majority of my time on the board. We had public comment in the beginning of the meeting, right at 7, mm -hmm. and uh, at the end of our regular session. So I have spent most of my time on the board with the opportunity at the end. And I've always agreed with that. I didn't necessarily, um, I, I think I voted on the, the policy to remove it um, at the end of our regular meeting with, with a bit of reservation because things do come up and if a member of our community is going to sit through this meeting and wants to make a comment at the end of our meeting, I think it's okay. But with that, I do, uh, I respect our new format, um, but I probably do agree with Bill and I, but I, I don't want to make a habit. I'm not this. looking to yeah. make a habit at all. Yeah. I just think that we owe these people some courage. And, we, and it hasn't the been that long. That's all. Um, that the process is maybe under a year old, so there might be. I, I'll, I'm good with whatever. I just, I'm just, I, I get it. You're 100 percent right. I voted. I voted in favor of the policy as well. Okay, Mark. For a change like this, does it affect the fact that it has to be posted on an agenda somewhere? You're adding something. Mm -hmm. So I, ask, I believe I ask that Kathy, a regular so, meeting, yeah. on a special meeting, I don't believe you can add no, agenda items, can't. but on a regular meeting, if you have a super majority, so two thirds of the board would have to vote in favor of adding. No, you can't. Because it hasn't been posted. Yeah. In that well, that's way. what I mean. If it hasn't been posted, yeah. are we allowed to do it? Statute. I think it's it's allowable. A lot of times the board has to weigh, you know, if it was a topic of some sort that we did not give the public the opportunity to see and therefore they didn't come because that wasn't on the agenda, you know, they didn't see it. You know, you weigh mm -hmm. the pros and cons, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's really up to the board um, and the vote of the board. Okay. Any other comments? Andrea, I, yes, yeah. I was going to say, for as much as I welcome public comment and I would love to hear from any member of the community who's here, I do believe that we should follow the rules. And maybe down the road we need to consider adding public comment to the end of the meeting again. I don't know. But for right now, I feel like we should follow the rules. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chrissy? No, I'm good. You're all set? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess you know, my, my thoughts, Bill, I, I, I echo mm -hmm. the concerns of you and Liz, but I, I, maybe as a lawyer, I worry about precedential value of doing this. And, and it, it's not, it's not, you know, because two weeks from now, I, I hope that when people will come, they're equally as passionate about their issues to address to us in two weeks' time at our next meeting. Um, but I do worry about the precedential value of doing this. Um, I appreciate the constraints put on everybody's time and getting here may be difficult, but 
Um, and I would never want to deny someone the opportunity to speak in front of us, but we have our procedures and I'm gonna you know, okay. stick with it, yeah. I respect that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Liz? Can I just add one thing? So yeah. I, I hope the public knows that at any time they can make a comment by, all of our emails are on the uh, fpsct.org right. mm -hmm. website. So it's, and um, I think, you know, that's a way to get your comments heard. Um, it's not like it's only this one minute period if you miss it in the beginning of a meeting, I guess mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to get across. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of opportunity okay. to have your comments heard. Actually, sorry. Yes, Chrissy, I, yeah, absolutely. I would like to say, um, you know, I wasn't here for that vote and um, I actually didn't realize that it used to be that way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's, you know, my not knowing that. Um, and I agree with Andrea that, Andrea that we should, you know, look into that maybe at some mm -hmm. point. Because um, I yeah. know for one, sometimes with sports and everything, it's really hard. And I know that that's making, um, but at the same time, I do understand that we do have rules and, you know, I'm learning them <laughs> um, as quickly as I can. Um, so, and that's it. Okay, like thanks. It. And if it's subject to being revisited in front of the entire board, I'm open to that. So, uh, Christine, I know do you. Uh, you all set? Okay. I'm good. Okay, so Bill's motion on the table to add an additional public comment. I'll just go around because we need a super majority. Andrea? No. Nay. Uh, aye. Nay. 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 Aye. Okay. So you got that done? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so the motion's overruled. All right, um, next item on agenda, item 11, executive session. I give motion to move into executive session. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? We're in executive session. All right, back in session. Um, next item on the agenda, item uh, 12. Jeremy, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, we're adjourned. Good job.